will continue Carnival at Candlelight in Chapter 4, Rats. Jack found Annie standing behind a column in a lantern-lit courtyard. The courtyard was quiet and empty. Everyone in Venice must be at Carnival, said Jack. I just hope the ruler is home. Yeah, we'll ask him if he knows the Grand Lady of the Lagoon, said Annie, and we'll tell him he has to help us save her from a terrible disaster. Jack looked up his map of the palace. Several rooms were labeled Ruler's Living Chambers. I guess that's where he lives, said Jack. We have to go up some stairs called the Giant Stairs to get there. The Giant Stairs, said Annie? Yes, yeah, said Jack. Listen to this. These stairs are called the Giant Stairs because they are guarded by two large statues of gods from Roman mythology. Mars, the god of war, and Neptune, the god of the sea. Cool, said Annie. Let's go. Jack and Annie hurried down the passageway that ran along the courtyard until they came to a wide staircase. On either side of the stairs were giant marble statues of strong-looking men. Mars and Neptune, said Jack. This is it. Come on. Jack and Annie quickly climbed the giant stairs. At the top, Jack looked at the map again. Now we turn right and head for the golden staircase, he said. Keeping an eye out for more guards, they crept down a hall until they came to a fancy staircase under a gold ceiling. There it is, said Jack. Let's climb up. He and Annie hurried up the golden staircase. When they got to the top, they froze. Another guard was slouched against the wall by the stairs. His eyes were closed, and he was snoring softly. Jack motioned to Annie, and they tiptoed past the sleeping guard to the entrance of the ruler's living chambers. Jack glanced at the map. This is it, he whispered. The door was open. Jack and Annie peeked inside. Knock, knock, Annie said in a soft voice. No one answered. They stepped through the doorway. A fire blazed on the hearth. Overhead, many candles burned brightly. The dancing flames cast shadows on a marble floor and a carved gold ceiling. I have a feeling the ruler's not here, said Annie. Maybe we should leave. Jack looked at their book. Wait, the next room is the map room, he said. Let's just take a look. Okay, but we'd better hurry, said Annie. Jack led the way into the map room. Colorful maps hung on the walls. In the middle of the floor were two huge globes. Jack sighed. I love this room, he said. Look, more lions, said Annie. She pointed to three paintings of winged lions on one of the walls. Why are there lions with wings everywhere? Jack looked up winged lions in their books. He turned to the right page and read, the winged lion is the symbol of Venice, represented in paintings and sculptures all over the city. The lion stands for strength on both land and sea. As Jack and Annie looked back up at the lion paintings, they heard footsteps. The grouchy guard and the sleepy guard rushed into the room. Hi, we're looking, began Annie. There they are, the thieves, the sleepy guard shouted at the grouchy guard. I told you I heard voices. We're not thieves, said Annie. We were just looking for your ruler to ask for his help. She's right, said Jack. We have to tell him that. Won't admit your crime, eh? said the grouchy guard. The worst cells are reserved for criminals like you. Move! But we, started Annie. Move! shouted the grouchy guard, raising his rifle and pointing to the door. Jack knew there was no use arguing. He took Annie's hand and led her out of the ruler's living chambers. The two guards walked behind them, pointing guns at their backs. To the end of the hall and down the steps, growled the grouchy guard. Jack and Annie walked quickly down the hall, then down some steep, narrow steps. They moved through a low stone corridor, the guards close behind them. Over the bridge of sighs, shouted the grouchy guard, and be sure to sigh when you cross it, because you won't be coming back for a long time. Jack gripped Annie's hand as they crossed a covered footbridge to another building. Once inside, they started down a lantern-lit hallway filled with puddles. Jack's shoes felt squishy and soggy as he sloshed through the water. Halt! shouted the grouchy guard. Jack and Annie stopped in front of a heavy wooden door. The grouchy guard opened the door and pushed them into a dark, damp cell. The door slammed shut. Jack heard a heavy metal bolt clank into place. Then he heard the guards splash away down the hall, arguing with each other. The prison was eerily quiet. It was hard to breathe in the stale cell. It was hard to see, too. Only the dim light of the hallway shone faintly through the barred window. Under the window was a wooden bench. What now? Annie asked in a small voice. For a moment, Jack couldn't answer. He was stunned. Minutes ago, they'd been at the bright carnival. Now they were locked in a dingy prison cell. 
I, I'll look in the book, he said. Jack felt shaky as he opened their research book. He moved close to the barred window to read by the dim light. He looked up prison in the index. He found it and read aloud. The prison cells at ground level in the palace were called the posse, meaning wells or pits. They were dank, airless, and filled with rats. Even the government eventually decided they were too cruel. Jack heard a squeak from a dark corner. He stopped reading and looked up. He heard the squeak again. The hair went up on his neck. Was that a rat? He wondered. Was that a rat? said Annie. The squeak came again from the dark corner. Then a squeak came from another corner. Jack heard rustling along the walls and more squeaking. Oh man, he breathed. There were rats everywhere. I think it's time for magic, said Annie. Yep, said Jack. Definitely. He kept his eye on the dark corners while Annie reached into his backpack and pulled out Teddy and Kathleen's book. Annie read from the table of contents. Make a stone come alive. Make metal soft. Turn into ducks. Annie looked up. Are rats afraid of ducks? she asked. Forget ducks, said Jack. Go back to make metal soft. That's what we need to do. You read the rhyme and I'll try to pull the bars apart. Okay, good, said Annie. Jack jumped in onto the wooden bench under the barred window. The squeaking grew louder. Jack reaped up, reached up and felt the iron bars. They were cold and hard and very solid. Jack couldn't imagine bending them. The squeaks were getting louder. Jack gripped two bars in the middle of the window and took a deep breath. Read the rhyme, he, re he said. Annie read aloud. Iron or copper, brass or steel, brie on saw, bro on beel. As Annie finished the rhyme, the bars began to glow. They grew warmer in Jack's hands. I think it's working, he cried. Holding the bars tightly, Jack pulled in opposite directions. Slowly, the glowing bars began to stretch and bend. Jack pulled till there was an opening large enough for Annie and him to fit through. We did it, he cried. Great, hurry, hurry. The rats are coming, cried Annie as she jumped on the bench. Jack heard a chorus of squeaks from all sides of the cell. He looked down. He saw the shadowy shapes of dozens of rats. They seemed to be sniffing the air below the window. Go, go, Jack cried to Annie. Annie squeezed between the bars and jumped down into the hallway. Jack followed her. He hit the wet floor and scrambled to his feet. Come on, he cried. Jack and Annie sloshed down the watery hallway. At the end of it, they nearly bumped right into two guards. Jack and Annie kept running. Hey, the grouchy guard shouted, running after them. He reached for Jack. The other guard tried to catch Annie. Jack and Annie dodged away from them. The guards crashed into each other, falling to the floor. Jack and Annie kept running. They dashed across the bridge of size. They ran through the corridor and up the steep stone steps. This way, cried Jack. He and Annie tore down the hall, heading for the golden staircase. Hey, hey, the guards yelled from far behind. Jack and Annie bounded down the golden staircase two steps at a time. They flew down the hall and down the giant stairs. They ran past the statues of Mars and Neptune and charged down the long, open passageway. Finally, they dashed through the entrance of the palace and escaped into St. Mark's Square.